Hello and welcome back to this series on Python and neural networks and deep learning for, for the purposes of DH or the digital humanities. Now, in the last few videos, we've started to take incremental deeper steps to the process of the creation of neural networks and what's happening inside of a neural network while it's being trained. We've looked at models, layers, we've looked at weights and activation functions, and we have seen some of the problems that one can encounter via training neural networks, such as overfitting and underfitting a neural network model. In this video, we are going to continue our discussion about the training of neural networks by looking at two other parts of the training process, and that is validation and testing. And in the process of this, I'm going to introduce you to yet again another concept, and that concept is loss. Loss, as we're going to see, is essentially the calculation that the neural network makes in order to identify how far away it was from being accurate so that it can go back and adjust the weights in the training process. Throughout this video, I'm going to show you how we are going to take or what we're going to do with input data that is taking a text and transforming it to a numerical array so that you can see what a neural network is actually seeing from a text. So let's jump right in. I've got here the Dan Brown text that we are going to be working with later in this series, and I also have the Oscar Wilde text that we're going to be working with later in this series. Now, in both of these cases, we have a semi-cleaned up text, meaning we've got a lot of uh, improper and in, uh, in incorrect data in our text removed. We've corrected the uh, overall structure of this text, and I'm going to go through all of this when I talk about data preparation and cleaning of data for neural networks to process. But for right now, just understand that this is what the text looks like. What we do, however, in order to feed this information to a neural network is we need to convert it to a numerical array. So a list of numbers. I'm going to explain this process in a lot more detail in a later video when we start to create and train neural networks for the purposes of binary text classification. In this video, though, I need you to be familiar with just that basic concept. Now, data for training a neural network is divided into three categories. There is training data, validation data, and testing data. Ideally, this should all be very similar, and the testing data should be stuff that the neural network has never seen before in either the training or validation. Now, the training and validation data is going to look exactly like this. Here we have the first sentence of Oscar Wilde's Dorian Gray, and we have the first sentence of Dan Brown's origin. Now, if you notice, two things seem odd here. The first thing is that this text, the Oscar Wilde text, has two question marks. This is known as padding, and I'm going to talk about this in a later video. Padding allows for you to have data that is of inconsistent lengths become consistent. So a text that has a max length or a sentence that has a max max length of 10 will be given two extra characters if it falls short of 10, while a sentence length or a text length of greater than 10 will be cut off. We can control the cutoff at either the beginning or end of the sentence in question or the text in question. In this case, we're seeing it cut off at the beginning, so it's grabbing the last 10 characters of the sentence. Again, I'm going to explain all of this in greater detail in a later video. For now, understand that this data, these words, are converted to texts so that a neural network receives an input that looks like this, a tuple that has two indices. The first is the numerical string that represents this data. So in this case, we have the word the represented by the number one, artist represented by the number 474, and over here we see the name Edmund represented by the number 37, etc. The second index, or index 1 in this tuple, is the actual label. So 0 represents Oscar Wilde, while 1 represents Dan Brown. You need to train a neural network in two stages, or with two collections of data. The first is your training data. This is what the neural network goes through and learns from. 
Then what the neural network does after each epoch is it validates what it has done as it adjusts its weights. And in doing so, it needs unseen data that is also labeled to test itself to make adjustments. This is known as your validation data set. It is important to remember that while validation and training data remain distinct, sometimes validation data, as Francois Chalet says in his book on deep learning and Python, your validation training data can sometimes bleed over into your training data, not explicitly, but through the learning process. The other set of data that you have is the testing data. Now the testing data will look very similar to this, except it will not have a label. It will be something like this, a list, an unlabeled list. And this list should be of the same length as the training data. It doesn't have to be, but it helps with the testing process. And in some cases, you might want to use inconsistently formatted texts, because that is the nature of real world data. In this lesson, however, we're going to be assuming that we have a max length of 10 assigned to our testing data. When we work with a max length of 10, we will have a list of 10 numbers that will be fed into the neural network. At that point, the neural network will make a prediction on that data. Now, this is going to be dealt with in the next video when we talk about prediction, but that is the three major classifications of training data that you need to have available. The initial training data, the validation data, and the testing data to see how well your neural network performs. Now, the other thing that I mentioned that I would talk about in this video was the concept of loss. What is loss and how does it work? Loss is the calculation that your neural network makes as it's going through and training. In the last video, I talked about how the neural network had weights and activation functions and how the weights would be adjusted. The determination of the neural network to adjust a weight to try to have a more accurate result as it processes the neural network data through things like stochastic gradient descent is going to be determined based on the loss. The loss is the degree to which the neural network was inaccurate. So if it was looking at a Dan Brown text and it said that it was certain that it was Oscar Wilde and decided to give it a prediction value of 0.1, it would have a loss of 0.9. And that means that it was off by 0.9, and that's the degree to which that it needs to adjust the weights to have a better result in the future. And it will do this with each iteration across batches, and it will do it after each epoch as well. This is the process of training, and this is the role loss plays in training. That's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you now have a good understanding of what input data looks like, how it goes from being a text into a numerical array, and how a label and uh, is works with that, and how it should be structured when going into the neural network. Hopefully you also have an idea about the three different major categories of training data, training data, validation data, and testing data, and hopefully you also now have a good understanding of the way loss works in the training process. That's going to be it for this video though. Thank you for listening. And in the next video, we're going to start working with prediction. And all of this is going to allow us to then talk about the different types of neural networks and explain generally what TensorFlow and Keras are. And then we can start getting into the fun part when we start actually creating and training these neural networks. That's going to be it for now though. Thank you for listening. And if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe down below.